this is a much darker world than... What? But yeah, like, it's fucking crazy. There are allegations that there are human rights abuses being carried out in these forests. Just from satellite images, you can see like huge swathes of the forest that have been lost. This is Vera's stamp of approval. If I get a chance, I'm going to ask Vera about this. They're there to safeguard the integrity of the entire system. There's significant concern about people like being scared to talk about what they're doing. It's not about my willingness to speak. It's about what our comms team wants to do. Well, no, I, I don't know the answer. Right. right. My name is Matt Shea. I'm a journalist. I travel around the world for stories and also for fun. I eat meat, I drive, I have a dog who also eats meat. I feel bad about my impact on the planet and it doesn't help that everywhere you look these days there's another flood or a fire. But at the same time, all the big polluters on the planet are saying they're reducing their carbon footprints to net zero. We all know that your carbon footprint is the amount of global warming gases you emit over a year. This is important because scientists say we have to keep temperatures below 1.5 degrees of warming if we want to avoid a catastrophic climate crisis. But it turns out many of these mega corporations aren't reducing their greenhouse gas emissions as much as they say they are. Many of their net zero plans include something called carbon offsetting. Offsetting projects often involve planting or protecting a forest somewhere and saying that the carbon sucked up by those trees cancels out all the pollution that you spewed out into the air somewhere else. It turns out the whole idea of the carbon footprint was popularized by a PR agency working for a major oil company. I find it hard to believe that all these polluting companies are really eliminating so many of their emissions. Someone has to be profiting from all this. I'm gonna look up how to calculate my carbon footprint. Carbon footprint calculator. I live in an apartment building. My diet is average omnivore. What is your average total weekly travel via above ground rail? If you know the answer to that question off the top of your head, you're, you're weird. That's insane. So it says for $153, I can neutralize my footprint by quote, offsetting. The idea is if I pay this organization to save a rainforest somewhere, that then makes it fine to fly all around the world and live an amazing life. $153, done. I'm absolved of all my sins. If it was that simple, then why, why are emissions even a problem? So I've been looking into this carbon footprint offset trend and it looks like almost every company you can think of is doing it now. Shell, Disney, Microsoft, Deliveroo, Chanel, Amazon. All of these companies have bought carbon offsets although many are now cooling on the idea after some damning journalistic exposés. If our entire future is in the hands of this carbon offsetting scheme, how do we know that it actually works? I'm on my way to meet a Guardian journalist named Patrick Greenfield, who's covered carbon offsetting programs quite critically. So what is a carbon offset and are they any good? Very simply, carbon offsets are magical tokens that you can buy to cancel out your emissions, right? These, these carbon credits are meant to represent uh, one ton of carbon that's either been removed from the atmosphere or is an avoided emission. To answer if they're any good or not, that's complicated, right? A lot of very bad. I read in one of your articles it said that 90% of rainforest carbon offsetting is basically is that true? So yeah. the biggest companies in the world often want to protect particular areas of rainforest. They can point to an area and say, we have kept that standing. And it turns out actually many of these schemes are not stopping any deforestation at all or stopping very small amounts. So how are they allowed to do this? Companies, when they're looking for these credits, when they're looking for good ones, seek out ones approved by Gold Standard or Vera. Vera are the biggest. They are a non-profit based in Washington. So this organization, Vera, what's your view on them? They are the, the guardians and they're there to safeguard the integrity of the, the system. They say what's real and what isn't. We need to trust them. They need to be using the best possible science. Net zero is simple. We need to be in balance with the world in terms of carbon emissions, right? What we're putting out needs to balance with what's being sucked back in. And that's, that's what we need, absolutely need to be correct about for this entire thing to, to, to work and to survive, <laughs> to survive yeah. yeah. The future of humanity relies on it. I mean, it, it, this market is, as I said, it's totally unregulated. So. A lot, and a lot of people have become very wealthy, I think, off hot air in, in some cases, right? It, it appears. There's actually, like, this is a much darker world than... What? But yeah. Like
crazy. I but didn't realize like there was a really strong pushback from people in the carbon offsetting world. So what do you mean by a strong pushback? What do I mean by a strong pushback? Um, no, I, I think, is it okay if I don't? If that's all right, yeah. I, I wanted to find out more, so Patrick put me on to a couple of upcoming carbon offsetting events where all the big players were attending. One of them, called Corporate Investments in Forestry and Biodiversity, previously disinvited Patrick from one of their events. While my team got on the case getting access, I started digging a bit into the world of offsetting, and what I found wasn't good. In fact, it was pretty shocking. All over the global south, from Kenya to Peru, there were reports of forest offsetting projects that seemed to be doing more harm than good to both the planet and to local people. There seemed to be a high number of particularly problematic projects in Cambodia, where there's widespread corruption and illegal logging. The authoritarian Cambodian government has been accused of arrests and assaults on environmental activists. I managed to get hold of an award-winning Cambodian journalist called Leng Ouch, who was beaten and imprisoned for trying to expose illegal logging. He sent me footage of the environmental abuses he has tried to uncover. We need your help from international organization, from the international donor, from the world leader, how to stop the human right of choose, stop illegal logging in Cambodia, and stop timber business with Vietnam and China. My team had got us filming access to the Corporate Investments in Forestry and Biodiversity event. I noticed that there were a number of speakers at the event from Vera. I was determined to ask them about their projects in Cambodia. Okay, so we have gone through the official route to get access, so they should have our names, but they also have ghosted us for the past 24 hours. It's basically a who's who of every major company in the UK, Shell, Glencore, Trafigura, so basically all the biggest oil and mining companies seem to want to be investing in biodiversity and forest protection. What is going on? So Patrick Greenfield just sent us the voicemail that he was sent when he was disinvited from this exact same conference. We've had a number of uh, concerning conversations with um, I said I'm at MIT today, I think some of our speakers and sponsors, and if just a large number of them are uncomfortable with you being in the room, we have no other choice but to um, uh, receive your invitation. And it's always a bad idea to disinvite a journalist from your event because it just makes it look like you're hiding something. As soon as we arrived, both of the organizers approached us and took us aside. They seemed nervous about us being there. Do you feel that offsetting is just about load of shit, or do you think it's, are you taking a political Oh wow, I'm getting right into the nitty gritty <laughs> from the offset. Well, um, it's been, they've been getting you know, bad, bad press from The Guardian mm. principally. Yeah, yeah, we have, and we don't agree necessarily with what The Guardian is saying. I think that's great. I mean, you know, we're, just coming at it from an objective point of view and looking to find out facts and find out more about it. You know, Guardian, Guardian, they really hate them. Like the Guardian, right. they, there's probably... Everyone hates them. <laughs> Everyone hates the Guardian. There's significant concern about people like, being scared to talk about what they're doing. So do you want to come up on stage with me? And then... Yeah, we can do that for sure. Hi everyone, yeah, I just wanted to quickly introduce myself. My name is Matt, and we're just doing a documentary about the whole carbon offsetting trend, about the market. We really want to just understand what you like about it, what you don't like, what's working, what isn't working. I've never had to introduce myself to a bunch of people who were that displeased to see me. I noticed that Vera had a stand, but they were apprehensive to chat to me. In fact, none of the big corporations were interested in talking about their forest offset programs. If either of you are up for chatting at any point, I'd love to do a quick interview. I'm chatting to everyone. What is your take on that at this point? So I don't have a take. That's for you to give me. I would have to check with my communications. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. The Italian oil company ENI are here. Sorry, did you manage to speak to your communications person about whether we could have a chat? Uh, no, not really. Okay, yeah, L'Oreal. Yeah, that's L'Oreal. So I was wondering if you'd be up for a, a chat? Uh, no. No? no. And I'd love to get the perspective of someone who works for an energy company. Would any of you be up for doing a quick chat? Not now, I don't think. We're still keeping under the, we're keeping under the radar a little bit. I'm asking relatively easy questions, but even despite that, people are still reluctant to talk to me, which makes me question, what are they worried I'm going to ask? 
the industry is in, under so much fire uh, ever since the Guardian article and everybody else. So, so that Guardian article upset like a lot of people. Some people were very disappointed to find out that the credits they bought were not real. A lot of people think that carbon credits are a scam. There's a lot of really good projects. There are also a lot of uh, very questionable projects, and that's the truth. What's your view on the offset market? Um, it has its own place. Um, okay, I feel like you're not telling me your actual view on the <laughs> offset market. It depends who uses carbon credits and yeah. for what purpose. Okay, so for example, Shell, British Airways. They're usually washing their hands with carbon credits. Okay. Yeah. I think a lot of the, the issue comes around the fact that they're sold, these carbon credits, as removing permanently some carbon from the yeah. atmosphere. Yes. That's not true, is it? It's, it's um, okay, you can tell because I'm looking at the ceiling. Uh. <laughs> hey, I was wondering if you would be up for chatting to us a bit about the whole Vera thing. Okay, maybe afterwards. Yeah, but can, you, can I send you an email address to, to engage with first? Okay, I've just come into this corridor so no one can hear me. Basically, everyone's a little antsy about us being here. Vera, in particular, keep kind of like running away from me when I try and speak to them. So I'm gonna try and get them on the way out of this next talk and see if they'll actually chat to me about the nitty gritty of what's actually in these carbon offset products. I was just wondering if you had spoken to your communications people and whether they had allowed you to speak to them. Let me see if they deserve that. It might take a minute. Okay, cool, I'll, 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 I'll come back, I'll come back. In the morning before I headed to the second day of the conference, I dug a bit deeper into Cambodian Vera projects. All right, so I've just found out about this forestry project in Cambodia in a place called Southern Cardamom. It's run by an organization called Wildlife Alliance. They've sold carbon credits to companies like Stella McCartney, Gucci, Air France, and Deliveroo. There are allegations that there are human rights abuses being carried out on the indigenous populations in these forests. It's actually being investigated by Human Rights Watch. So Vera, who had verified this project, have put it on pause. So I'm gonna try and find some local journalists who've been investigating it. What do the local indigenous communities think about what Wildlife Alliance is doing there? They, they, they scare Wildlife Alliance. Um, when, when they see the Pretola Wildlife Alliance, they just run. Sometimes Wildlife Alliance staff, they burn their farm, yes. So Wildlife Alliance has actually burned their farms down? Yeah, yeah. A few of them were arrested. Why did they burn the farms? Um, they, they burn the farm because they think that the indigenous people, they grow in the farmland. Is it Wildlife Alliance or is it the government that patrols the forest? Both of them. They, they, they have gun. Community, they also said they want to protect their forest too, but the Wildlife and don't give them the opportunities. On the one hand, it appears this organization is doing a decent job protecting the Forest Wildlife Alliance, but I don't know how I feel about kind of local indigenous people being terrified of armed groups going around telling them they can't cut down trees and can't farm here or there, when it's all basically just to make giant corporations in the West feel better about themselves. If I get a chance, I'm gonna ask Vera about this in today's conference. So Matt, the media team from Vera have said that the timing and short notice might be a bit challenging, but we'll see what we can do. Let's see if they actually do appear for some kind of interview because they should be able to answer these questions right off the bat. It is their job. So. Hey, how's it going? Um, so I spoke to your communication officer. They said they would try and find a time today. Did they speak to you? No. Okay. The last I heard, Joel was going to set something up for another time. It's not about my willingness to speak. It's about what our comms team wants to do. So. Got it. Okay, I'm absolutely desperate to talk to Vera and ask them like at least one question. But since I don't know whether this interview is going to happen, I've just realized that they're on a panel in the next five minutes. So I'm going to go and try and ask them a question there. Yeah, there's a forestry project in uh, South Cardamom in Cambodia that's been accused of uh, human rights abuses. A question for Vera, did you verify this project? And so what's your response to these allegations? 
I actually don't have any of that information um, on hand, so I can't answer that question. But so it was um, there were accusations that um, people were uh, that property was burned to local indigenous people um, by the Wildlife Alliance, which managed the project. Yeah, I, sorry, I don't have the, the details. Um, that is a project that has gone through our system, but also if that project is under review, it would not be appropriate to talk about it during the review because we are an in independent standard body. Okay, well, um, if you're up for speaking about it further, um, we can chat afterwards. Thank you. Uh, any further questions? Sorry, did you want to chat too? Yeah, I'm um, off camera though. Okay, guys. Okay, so we've just been asked to stop filming at the conference because I asked a question about alleged human rights abuses. In any situation where you're a journalist and a simple question, especially in our case, one that's already been publicly reported, leads to you being asked to stop filming, it just raises more questions and it's not a good look to avoid scrutiny. If your goal is to save the planet and this isn't just about money, then surely the more scrutiny, the better. But I wasn't too worried because I thought we still had access to the Carbon Forward conference that Vera was also attending. But then we got an email. Now we had press accreditation to this conference, but mysteriously, all of a sudden, after we asked that question to Vera today, our invites have disappeared and apparently there's no more space. While my producers got on the case on how to get into the event, I did some more research into Vera projects in Cambodia. So an article has just come out about the Tumring project in Cambodia. You can see from satellite imagery that it looks like most of the forest is gone. So I'm going to try and get one of the journalists who did this investigation on the line. What is going on in the Tumring project? Really high deforestation is, is what's going on. You're seeing like just from satellite images, you can see like huge swathes of the forest that have been lost. Is this Tumring project in particular, is it verified? Yeah, this is, has uh, various stamp of approval. Are carbon offset credits still selling based on this forest? They're still on the market. They are pushing to, to do reforms because investors are getting nervous. All right, so it's 7 a.m. I'm in a van outside the Carbon Forward Conference another corporate forestry conference, and the chief legal and policy person for Vera is gonna be there. This is the guy from Vera who we need to ask some questions to, basically. I've got a button camera right here, which clips into the lapel. He's got one as well, so make sure you just kind of hover near this guy and near me, and then you'll be able to pick up the questions that we ask him. And yeah, hopefully we don't get kicked out. We've all got fake names. Is that definitely him? Let's do it now. Yeah. Hey, is it Robin from Vera? Hey, good to see you again. We met at a conference a while ago. Oh, yeah, Robin Rick. Yes. Um, yeah, so you work for Vera, right? Yes, that's right, yes. Okay, so I was wondering, I had a couple of questions. How come um, Vera is still verifying the Tum Ring project, even though there's been wide scale deforestation? So, okay. Where are you? Sorry, what your name is? Uh, Kim Calloway. Forestry ESA. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, so Tumring, yeah, I, I'm afraid I don't know enough about the specific projects, to be honest. Okay, so this is a picture of the, um, the forest. So, Have you seen these images? Was this recent, this one? Is deforestation greater or less than what we than what was supposed to happen before? I it's uh, up to 22% deforestation. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm mean, quite worried. Yeah, I haven't... But does that worry you to see that? Because this is the, one of the things I'm, I'm so curious about how guess, carbon offsetting works. Well, I mean, I guess for, for me, the question is, is it more or less than what would have happened um, without the... Morning, I, I don't know the answer to right. that question. The way the Cambodian government kind of uh, verifies these projects is they only count 10% of the trees, so you can chop down 90% of the forest and it would still count as forested. This is Okay, let me... I will make a note of this and get back to, get back to you on this one. Okay. Right, right, right. But Vera still verifies it, right? So would you uh, tell companies like Marathon, the Texas oil company, that their carbon offset credits are no longer valid? So if it's greater than what the baseline is supposed to be, we would make the project component. So would you do that then for this project? Uh, I don't know enough about it, but if you yeah, well, well, think that the human deforestation has been greater than what they reported, yes, they would continue to have that. Okay, okay. And is it true that 90% uh, of the kind of Vera verified carbon uh, credits are worthless, like that Guardian article said? No, uh, we don't. The, you don't think so? 
Our conversation was cut short as Robin had to take to the stage for his talk. But not long after that, I was approached by the event organizers. And shortly after, we were asked to leave. So I was just kicked out of the conference for asking what I think is a very reasonable question. And if the person whose job it is to protect these forests doesn't know that they're being cut down, it raises huge questions about the whole carbon offsetting industry and whether it really is a solution to climate change.